السلام عليكم. Checking the normality of the data distribution is the very first step before handling the data or applying any statistical analysis to it. In this presentation, we'll go through not only how, but also why should we be checking the normality of the data sample. Why? Because if we can show that the data has a normal distribution, some uh, very important assumptions can be made safely. If the uh, set of data is distributed normally, we can assume where the central tendency is and how the data is spread around the mean about the central point. And in that case, we can characterize the set of the data with few parameters and then parametric tests, the more powerful parametric uh, statistical tests can be employed in the data analysis. Uh, we can also make some safe assumptions like how the data is distributed. 68% uh, would be within one standard deviation from the central point. And uh, so 68, 95, 99.7% will go through in a second. We can also have fair assumptions about the z-score and the confidence intervals. So it's important to know whether the set of data is normally distributed or not at the very beginning of the data handling. But how can this be achieved? A visual uh, examination of the frequency charts or the histograms can sometimes tell whether the set of data is normally distributed or not with the classic configuration, the bell-shaped configuration the symmetry between the two sides around the center of the bell shape and um, the other characteristics of the uh, normally distributed data. Uh, but we can also use some specific tests to tell whether the data is distributed normally or not. And we'll go through the QQ plot, the shapiro wick test, and the Kolmogorov sminorov test. So starting with a set of data like this, there will be several variables uh, to be analyzed. And each of these variables has a set of data. And if this set of data and the several tests and the several variables are distributed normally, then we can tell where is the middle part of the set of the data. And we can be pretty confident that about 68 0.2% of the data would be one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below that central part. And that 95% of the data would be within two set standard deviations above and below the uh, central part. Uh, so that any, um, any value above the two standard deviation limit would indeed be very uncommon and would be significantly different from the rest of the data. Uh, the same applies if any value of this set is more than three standard deviations or above or below the central part, we would know that this is very uncommon indeed. Uh, the chance of it happening is very low since 99.7% of the data should lie between these. We can also assume because the data is uh, normal distribution distributed uh, that any particular value of this has certain z score related to how far is it from the central part in terms of how many standard deviations or fractions of the standard deviation and then we could uh, assign a z score to any of these values but if the set of data is not normally distributed and the distribution cannot be characterized by few parameters because the data is either skewed or kurtotic or does not have any particular pattern, then you cannot characterize this set of data with few parameters and you cannot use the parametric tests. And then you have the alternative set of statistics, the less powerful, non-parametric tests.
The first of the normality tests is a variant of the QQ plot. A QQ plot stands for quantile by quantile plot. A quantile is a point uh, which represents either a fraction or a percentage of the data set. So the 90% uh, quantile, for example, would represent where is the point where 90% of the data falls uh, below and 10% of the data falls above that point. A 30% quantile would have 30% of the data uh, below and 70% of the data above. And a, the quantile plot, plot um, basically compares two sets of data, one uh, plotted in the x-axis and the other on the y-axis. And if the two sets of data are very similar to each other, they would form a straight line and if they are not, there would be some deviation from the straight line. Now, the normal probability plot is a variant of the QQ plot in which uh, we use the set of the experimental data on the y-axis and on the x-axis we use a theoretical uh, set of data if the uh, set of values that we have are really very well normally distributed, they should have these uh, theoretical values. So on the x-axis, we'd have the theoretical values if all the values are actually uh, uh, forming a normal distribution, and the y-axis would have the actual values obtained from our experiment. And if the two sets of data are quite similar, that is to say, if the experimental set has a normal distribution, then they should form a straight line. And But if they are not, if there is some deviation of the way the uh, points are plotted from the straight line, then we know that there is some deviation from the normality distribution. So, for example, if the data is not distributed normally, like in here where there is some skewness of the data to the right, and there is some very high scores of the data that are quite far from the central point of the data distribution, rather than having a straight line, these very high scores in terms of their um, distance from the center the standard deviation here is 8, standard deviation from the center, or 6, would cause this. Because if we plot the actual figures on the y-axis against the theoretical uh, figures on the x-axis, these very high scores and the end of the skewed data would form, uh, would, uh, form this deviation from the straight line. And we could tell from this QQ plot that the data is skewed. Conversely, if there is skewness to the left, and we have some very low values here that are quite apart from the central point, there are again either minus 8 standard deviations or minus 6 standard deviations from the central part, these very low figures would cause this deviation from the straight line at the beginning of the QQ plot. And again, we would know that from this plot that there is this set of data is skewed, and it is probably skewed to the left as opposed to this, which is skewed to the right. Another form of deviation from the normal distribution is the kurtosis, when we have that tails, we have a spreading of the data well uh, away from the central part or the uh, aggregation of all or most of the data quite close to the central part. Um, in this case, there will be fat tails and on the other case, we would have very thin tails because most of the data is quite close to the central part.
and again a QQ plot would show this uh, clearly because of the spread of the data quite uh, apart from the central point you would have deviation from the straight line uh, at the beginning because of this uh, set of data away from the uh, central part and you would also have deviation from the straight line at the end and this would be shown here because again of the very high uh, standard deviation z scores standard deviations differences from the middle point uh, on the other hand if there is an issue with thin tails, most of the data is actually in the central part with very little spreading uh, on the two sides, then we would have another form of deviation from the central line. Uh, there would be some deviation at the beginning here because we don't have enough data in this area. And uh, there would be also some deviation at the end here and the other direction because again we don't have enough uh, number of uh, values at this area the second test for the normality of the data set is the shapiro wilk test this is a very powerful test for normality in which we calculate the value w this is the ratio between the numerator and the denominator here to obtain the numerator, all the data would be arranged from the very low to the very high, and each single data would be multiplied by a certain constant. So x1 would be multiplied by a1, and xn uh, would be multiplied by an. And the uh, sum up would be squared, and this will be divided by the actual uh, spread of the data around its mean here uh, each single dot would be uh, uh, subtracted from the mean and this uh, would be squared and the sum of the squares would form the denominator now this value w would be 1 if the data is perfectly normally distributed but it would be less than one if there is any deviation from normality and the smaller the value of the w the less normal the data set are and some caution with the use of this shapiro wilk test is that it doesn't work very well if there are too many actual values that are similar and equal or if the number of the data sample is small then the power of the test to detect deviation from normality is low and on the other hand if you have a very large set of numbers the test would be uh, very powerful too powerful as to detect very minimal deviation from uh, normality and the shapiro wilk test the null hypothesis is that the set of data is actually normally distributed. So if the p-value is less than the alpha value, is less than 0.05, then the null hypothesis would be rejected, and we know that the set of data is not normally distributed. And this set of skewed data, the Shapiro-Wilk W was 0.87, less than 1, and the p-value is less than uh, one in thousand so this is an evidence that this set of value is not normally distributed because the uh, p-value is very significant then this is not normally distributed on the other hand if the p-value is greater than the chosen alpha level usually at a five percent level then the null hypothesis that the data is normally distributed cannot be rejected and then we cannot uh, reject that this set of data is normally distributed uh, this set of data has a shapiro wilk test of 0.97 which is close to one 
and the p-value of this is 0.57 this p-value is higher than 0.05 and therefore we can we don't have reasons to reject that this set of data has a normal distribution you would see on this software uh, package that another uh, and the test for normality was also used um, in addition to the Shapiro Wilk test. This is the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. The Kolmogorov Smirnov test is the third test of normality in which a cumulative distribution function of the set of data, if it is perfectly normally distributed, would form this red line this is a cumulative distribution function any point here would be the addition of all the points uh, before it uh, and it would reach 100 percent at the very end this uh, ideal red curve would be compared to the actual cumulative distribution of the set of data the experimental data that we have obtained uh, in blue here and the distance between the theoretically perfect uh, normal distribution and the actual cumulative distribution would form the basis for the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. And again, here, if the test is significant, if the value is less than 0.05, then the normality is rejected. And we know that the set of data is not normally distributed. So what can we do if we end up with a set of data that has a distribution like this, which is far from normal? One way out of this is to increase the number of the samples. Uh, every time we increase the number of the sample, the distribution of the data when it is doubled here would look more like a normal distribution and every time the number of the samples increase the shape of the distribution would come closer to uh, the normal distribution this is the basis of the very famous central limit theory in statistics uh, which tells you that the shape of the sampling distribution becomes normal as the sample size increases this is basically because the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, that's to say the standard error, gets smaller as the uh, sample size increases. The standard deviation would be divided by the square root of the uh, n or the number of the samples to obtain the standard error. And every uh, when we have a higher n here, you get a smaller standard error of the mean. One last thing, if a set of data is not normally distributed, like this set of data, and you can no longer use the parametric test to uh, describe the data or compare it to other groups, you can do one of two things. You can either use the non-parametric test based on the ranks rather than the actual value of the data, or you can try and normalize this distribution. Uh, by normalizing this distribution, we refer to the use of certain mathematical transformation, like using the logarithms of the values or its square root or its reciprocal. And this would bring the um, distribution of the data to a more normal shape. These are the same set of data but with its logarithm rather than the actual score. And if you are able to obtain a normal distribution by this mathematical calculations, you can then use the uh, transformed pattern to do all the tests required before transforming it back to its actual score. By this we call a normalization of a skewed distribution or a kurtotic distribution. By this we come to the end of this presentation on how and why should we be checking the normality of the data sample before starting any statistical 
analysis. Assalamu alaikum.